So I'd like to give you an overview of the Lego lower name subject to change, which is an Air 15 lower receiver composed primarily of Legos and epoxy. And as far as I'm aware, the world's first Lego firearm. Uh, so the Feinstein project, those guys there, they attempted to do this before. I'm not sure if they ever succeeded in building a Lego firearm. I know they put together some other fire or some other AR lowers. I don't think they ever got one out of Legos entirely though. Uh, if they did, I guess I'll eat my own words, but they were the inspiration for this project. So uh, from them, I took one, the entire idea of a Lego lower receiver, and two, I took their idea of a PVC pipe buffer tube, which to be frank is a very good idea. And I don't think I would have been able to get this working otherwise. Now, I'd like to say the motivation of this project were, you know, in response to the 80% uh, the lower ban, uh, the Pennsylvania, uh, what was he, Attorney General put forward in December, but I started this well before then. It just was good timing. I happen to show that a 80% uh, lower really isn't necessary to go make a firearm yourself or make an air lower yourself, even with crude tools and no real expertise. So... My goals when making this were to just make a big chunky thing that absolutely would work. Uh, when I looked at the Feinstein Project's attempts, it looked that they had trouble with the buffer tube, or rather where the buffer tube attaches to the lower, lower in general. Uh, that's generally a weak part on polymer lowers in general. And uh, I think that because they were attempting to confine to the, or conform to the AR form factor, they were having difficulty producing something strong enough to actually make it work. Uh, so I chose to come to this from the angle of, I don't know if it's possible, I'm gonna make the biggest, chunkiest, least usable, but most strong thing that I possibly can. And well, if it works, maybe I'll go and build something better looking and more usable. I don't think I'm gonna do that, but uh, well, we have one at least. <laughs> so for this project, I think I spent about $55 on materials, most of which I haven't used all the way. Uh, I spent $22 on a box of random Legos, or knockoff Legos rather, off Amazon. Uh, $15 on a pack of JB Weld 5-Minute Epoxy, which I used almost all of, so that's one of the more expensive parts of this. I have Legos left over, but no more epoxy left over. Spent a uh, I think six bucks on a piece of 532nd roll rod for the hammer and trigger pins and maybe five bucks on a section of one inch diameter oak dowel to fill up at the rear of the buffer tube. And let's see, oh, and a Air 15 carbine buffer end buffer spring, which I had one that I could have pulled out of another lower, but I just wanted to be able to keep this guy permanently assembled because as you'll see, it's kind of annoying to take apart and put back together. So basic operation here, we have all the things that you would expect in an AR-15 other than a grip and a trigger guard, of course, and a bolt release, which I didn't think I'd be able to fit one in there and have it strong enough to actually hold the bolt open. And also, let's show clear right here, just so we're comfortable there. Uh, yeah, we have a 90 degree throw, safe fire safety right here. In the safe position, it is of course safe. The trigger is blocked from moving. In the fire position, the trigger can move and we can fire. We have a magazine release, which is a big chunky button right here. Yep, which is pretty much the same in concept as an AR-15 magazine release or magazine catch. It's just bigger, chunkier, and cruder because I made it with hand tools and I'm not a very good welder. Um. That aside, let's get to disassembly. Oh, yeah, no, sorry, the magazine catch. Let's demonstrate that actually as we can. Yep, retain, drops free. So let's move on to disassembly. First, we're going to remove the upper from the lower, which is kind of annoying because the buffer and buffer spring are not retained. So first pin comes out nice and easy. This is just one quarter inch drill rod that I cut down and then kind of sand it a little bit smooth by putting it in a uh, hand drill. And the rear, 
I'm bracing the upper against my body to keep the buffer spring compressed after I push this pin out. It falls out, same as the front, just a little bit narrower because the fire control pocket is narrower. And then we're going to hold the buffer and spring, let those come out. That's just a standard AR-15 carbine buffer and spring. And we have our upper separated from our lower. Uh, now I made the pockets here two bricks wide, which these lugs are about a millimeter, maybe two millimeters narrower than a regular two socket Lego brick, I guess. So my work around there was to cut out the insides of a brick and it turns out the inside of a brick is actually the exact size as these takedown lugs. So I just cut some out, put them in there, and now they're another, another piece to lose every time I, uh, well, take this thing apart, which is one of the reasons I didn't want to. So we'll set this aside. Our safety is pretty much a standard AR safety in design. We have a cutout here on this side, which when down allows the trigger to move and allows the hammer to fall. And when turned away, we have the full diameter of the what, 3 8 inch safety selector bar here, which prevents the trigger from moving. We can remove that fairly easily. Oh, sorry. It is retained by a flat spring right here. Hopefully I'm getting that on camera. A piece of spring steel, which was a binder clip at one point in time that I just kind of cut and bent until it went down and pressed right onto a groove that I have cut on the inside edge of the selector switch. So to remove that, we just press down on that spring steel and pull the selector switch out. Fairly simple construction, just 3 8 inch steel rod with kind of a file down section there to allow the trigger to move. Uh, a file down ring here, which I did just by tossing this in a hand drill and holding a file against it, with then holes drilled there and there for, I guess, detents it would be at the fire and safe positions. Other than that, we have a piece of 1 8 inch steel rod that I just drilled a hole for, pushed through, and then welded from the top to retain in place. And we have a nice functional safety selector switch. Now the hammer and trigger are of course stock air 15 hammers and triggers with some pins that I made myself because the leg the edges of the Legos were not strong enough to hold these in place. They would just kind of egg out every time or after a couple of shots. So that is just a 332nd second of drill rod that I cut to length and then etched in a small circle or a small groove with a file for the, uh, the spring inside that hammer that normally retains these pins to catch, I suppose, as you would have in a regular hammer and trigger pin. Trigger comes out the same. There we go. And same thing, just I put this where the tail of the hammer spring lays as it would normally be on the trigger pin. And that's the fire control taken out. The magazine release is just threaded on there. Uh, the push button I made just by cutting out a little rectangular section of steel bar stock and welding a, uh, a nut on the back of it. I don't actually have a tap on me, so I just made do. Uh, that's one less tool that I need to use here. Spring, just from a spring that I had laying around, I think from a random pack of springs from a hardware store. And the magazine catch, which is the section of steel bar stock. It's actually, this was actually cut out from the leftovers from that. Section of steel bar stock that I just cut with an angle grinder into shape. And then uh, file away here until I was catching the magazine at the appropriate height. So. Fairly simple there, it was all hand fit, no planning there. In order to get this threaded rod on here, I just drilled a hole, stuck a screw or a big long screw through it, I guess bolt through it, and welded the rear of that in place. So one big piece doesn't move anywhere. And that's our field strip lower receiver. Uh, you can get a better look here at the 
retaining spring or catch for the safety selector switch. Uh, uh, I wouldn't do that again, or I would have done this a different way if I were to try this over again, but oh well. So for construction here, at the rear of the buffer tube is just a section of PVC. I then had a three inch long section of one inch diameter, sorry, this is one inch diameter PVC, a three inch long section of one inch diameter oak dowel rod, just to, you know, which I epoxied in place inside here to take up the recoil from the rear of the buffer and bolt carrier hitting the rear of the, the buffer tube. Uh, this buffer tube is attached to the rest of the lower just by epoxy, uh, which is why this is so messy up here. I just mixed a bunch of epoxy together, dumped it all in there and held this guy down until it's set. Uh, so far, so good. That's definitely not the weakest part of this receiver so far. Uh, as it is, that appears to be holding up well. The bit that I'm most worried about breaking is probably going to be these takedown pins up here, which are fairly weak, or takedown lugs, rather. Apart from that, when I was designing the lower receiver here, really all I did was haphazardly toss bricks together. I didn't have a plan in mind. I just saw, oh, you know, the uh, hammer and trigger are about two bricks wide. They're actually slightly lar larger, so I had to toss this guy in there and then file it down until it fit perfectly. Saw they were about two bricks wide, built something that was the shape of a fire control pocket, about the shape of the lower, then the same up to the magazine well, until I had something that vaguely looked like a lower receiver. I then drilled holes for the takedown pins and placed the hammer and trigger pin, pins appropriately, indexing off of a regular lower receiver that I had laying around. I just set those, lined those up, and put these pins where they ought to be. Same for the safety selector switch. Then I found out that I made this too wide by making it two bricks, so I ended up going at that with a Dremel sanding, um, well, you know, dre Dremel sanding bit, sanding wheel there, I guess. Drum, drum is the term. Dremel sanding drum uh, to cut out enough room for the front of the hammer right in here. Uh, poor planning, so if I were to do this again, I think I would uh, go and just make this one brick wide so I didn't have to do something so haphazard and ugly. At the same time, I had to toss another brick here to catch the legs of these trigger pins for the trigger to actually return and reset. I didn't think about that during design, and uh, well, that's what happens when you do that. You kind of end up with something a little bit haphazard. Uh, Oh well. The magazine well, I found that four bricks was too wide and two bricks was too narrow and in order to keep this thing symmetrical I needed to somehow find a three brick wide section. Uh, my solution there was to make it four bricks wide then just epoxy these flat pieces on the inside there. Uh, so far so good. I kind of went at that with a hand file until the magazine fit well and was retained. Uh, it slides freely so Mission accomplished, I suppose. In order to cut the, the magazine catch and I guess magazine release push button holes, all I did was go with this with a Dremel, I think metal cutting pit actually, and just kind of eke out the areas that I needed. Uh, when I first did this, I misaligned it somewhat and uh, it's actually higher sitting than it needs to be. I should have put this you know, a couple millimeters lower so that I wouldn't have to cut out so much from the actual catching surface of this. So uh, you can take note of that if you ever want to make that yourself. Uh, go about halfway line between these bricks there. Uh, same on this side, just cut in and cut out something big enough for this button to sit in. For this spring I drilled a, I think that is one quarter inch hole and only drilled it partially the length of the spring and then drilled a probably one eighth or three series thirty second hole all the way through to allow the threaded section of the magazine catch to go all the way through. Uh, that then applies pressure on this and pulls it into the magazine well to retain the magazine. That aside, so conclusions here, I definitely am not interested in doing any more of this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this was incredibly time consuming for what it was. Uh, really the big killer was the stock here, which you know, epoxy sets and it has to be held in place until it does. So this ended up taking, you know, one section of bricks at a time every day after work. It ended up taking me like two weeks of, you know, a quick 15 minute session of epoxying or not two weeks, you know, a week, two weeks of 15 minutes of epoxying, 
which, uh, yeah, I was starting to lose interest by the time I really had that together, but it's paid off. I have a nice, big, solid stock. And yeah, that is what we have. The world's first Lego firearm, as far as I'm aware. Uh, thanks to the Feinstein Project for inspiring this, giving me that idea there. Um, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>